What's going on, YouTube V here? So today we're doing a market watch. I got a lot of cards, cards to talk about. A lot of things changing, um, opening a card shop. So I honestly didn't have the time the past couple of days because I had to move everything from the card shop up from my garage into the card shop. And I'm not sure if you ever moved like a six foot showcase. That thing is heavy. <laughs> um, I had to do it with help my, a little bit of help with my wife, a little bit of help, mostly me. Uh, moving a couple of six foot showcases, a four foot showcase. Really exhausted, but uh, I'm glad to be back doing what I'm doing. And um, I used to do my market watches Monday through Friday. I'm, I'm just looking, looking forward to getting back in that flow of doing market watches. Maybe I'll even do some from the card shop, which I'm really looking forward to do. So definitely stay subscribed to this channel and be able to check that out. As, re as well as card shop vlogs, daily vlogs of me within the card shop, what I do and what I fix up. So once again, stay subscribed to this channel. I, I, those videos are coming out I, almost every day I'm in the card shop. I'm going to be recording uh, that content. I would love for you to guys to check it out. Everyone except Sarah Slack, uh, who gave me a one-star review on my Facebook page. Very acknowledged in what they talk about. They really provide evidence in their videos and overall unfriendly. Sarah, I would believe this as an honest Facebook review if you didn't make the uh, your Facebook account last month. Um, so evidently, my trolls are even random Asian people. I, I don't think this, I, this has to be a dude. Random dude account to make their Facebook page like a month ago. Um, just basically giving one star reviews. That hurts, Sarah. Or John, where the fuck your name is. Because you're probably a dude trying to like honey pot dudes. Whatever. It's pretty gay. Up next, the World Prom Championship promos. So now they're being sold separately. So the 2018 Dark Magician one is going for about $200. Whereas the other ones, like the Blue Eyes, is going about $340 pretty insane you get both promos at a low low price of four hundred and thirty dollars in fact this one comes with a little envelope uh -huh. five hundred dollars it's insane how much uh the, this promo uh this promo setup is going it's really hot right now and like i said this one got two for 100 like i said right now everyone's going crazy over this because collectors are into the this is what happens when we get collectors and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players, and then over here there's casual Yu-Gi-Oh players, and they all want the same thing. This rarely happens in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh, believe it or not. In fact, the majority of the time, nobody really cares. It's usually the, the competitive players want something, collectors, casuals don't care. Casuals want something, nobody cares. Literally, it's it's a mouse getting eaten in the woods. You just don't care. In fact, if you did care, you would have cared about five minutes ago. Because statistically speaking, it's like every 20 minutes, one's getting eaten in the woods. I made that up, but you're not going to go Google that, will you? Anyway, moving on. When a, collector, when a collector cares about something in the market, we all just look at it and go, Wow, you all bought ulti skyscrapers. You guys are insane. So it's really weird to see something that when everyone cares about it. And when you look at the World Championship 2018 promo cards, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing everyone a community care about one thing. And, and that's why the price is so high. The price will probably go down a bit. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be as like as low as like $20, but it's not going to be $430 come the 2019 World Championship Celebration promos. Konami knows, this, Konami knows this is a huge success, and they're going to follow up with this by doing this next year. So don't be too bummed out about this. We're going to have more coming up by, as the year goes on. I think Konami is being really innovative, and I really want to do a video about Konami... Uh, Wizards of Coast, all these gaming companies, because I feel Konami is doing what I... If you watch my videos beginning of this year, I said Konami's going to have to really... Uh, Wizards of Coast is kind of failing in certain areas of, of, of their company, and I feel like Konami has great opportunity to pick the slack. And we're seeing that happen right here, especially with these World Championship Celebration promos. Uh, looking at... Uh, actually, we're looking at Ash Blossom and Joy Spring more quickly. I'm going to show you guys at the end of this video, we'll look at... We'll look at SHVA, uh, Shadows of a Hollow in a second, but I want you to look at this number when you look at Ash. It's about 15 to 16 dollars for Ash, so please keep that number in mind when we look at Shadows of a Hollow later on in this video. And I'm going to go back to this because I want to talk about this real quickly. So, Zabog the Mega Monarch has been bought out. Yeah, I don't know why. I would love to read one of your comments and you could actually let me know why Zaborg the Mega Monarch has been bought out. There's way better monarchs than Zaborg the Mega Monarch. Can we agree on that? Like, we know there's a lot of reprints, but there's not many, I don't know, Mobius the Mega Monarch? And not just, like, regular Mo Mo uh, Mobius. Not the Shadow. Not, not these versions of this, of this Mobius. I'm talking Mobius the Mega Monarch. Ghost Rare from Legacy of Valiant. Currently trending around $7 on price point. 7 to $8 max on price point for a ghost rare and and, and the borgs over that by a dollar or two on original print that makes no sense to me i think that this should have been the hot buy and not this and we could talk about mobius to make a monarch for 
for a hot buy, whether it's competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! or whether it's collecting, but it's a very good card, and it's one of the very few Ghost Rares that at one time in Yu-Gi-Oh! showed prevalence in, in the main deck. I'm not talking about like Stardust, you know, I'm not talking about any of that jazz, but a lot of the main deck Ghost Rares really didn't do much. I mean, Honest kind of did, and Mobius kind of did. But I think I'll listen more. But uh, very few parts in our game. And I think Mobius and Manning Monarch is an absolutely great collector's card. Like I said, Valiant's an old set. And I don't see Konami reprinting Ghost Rays anytime soon, do you? Uh, moving on, let's look into Cybernetic Horizon. Remember this set? <laughs> that has anyone forgotten about this set yet? Because I feel like everyone's already into Shadows Valhalla. Shadows Valhalla. Shadows Valhalla. Cybernetic Horizon just came out like a couple of weeks ago. What, two weeks ago maybe? Three weeks ago max? And I feel like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players have already forgotten about Cybernetic Horizon uh, uh, booster box. Now the fun thing about Cybernetic Horizon is that when it came out, we all thought it was going to be amazing. We heard, we heard so much crap about dangers and how the Ninja Archive was going to be the best archetype. We heard about how Boros Old Dragon, and, and I mean, still holding its price point, but Boros Old Dragon was going to do way more than it did. It just didn't pan out as much as I think a lot of you can play a store, including myself, by the way. But looking at Boros Old Dragon, it was at a $70 to $80 price point. It was insanely high. Um, and now it's down to about $54 from a $70, was it, $78 card. That's pretty crazy high in value. Uh, looking at Danger Nessie, the, all the Danger R-Types, which is insanely high in value, they decline pretty heavily. And, um, yeah, that's pretty insane. Looking at Bigfoot, another card that just climbed down. These were $70 cards. Cyber's Rev System actually maintained its value, maintaining a $15 price point. Uh, Crusader Equinox was about 9 to 10 and holding that price point. And I think we're waiting to see the regionals coming up. What, tomorrow I think we're going to have regionals, then we got the ARG. This is really what happens with Crusader. That's going to determine this card's price tremendously. We have Cyber Dragon Zyger, which is about $10, so it didn't fall too much. And then we have Danger Jackalow, which is about 10 held its price. Uh, Hertz has kind of went down a little bit to 8 Triple Calibre, which was a 10 to $15 card, is now down to $6. And th th the Danger Archive needs this weekend badly. And every Archive in Yu-Gi-Oh! Danger needs his Archive this week to, 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 to run the fucking numbers this weekend. Because if Danger doesn't run any numbers this weekend, they're going to be irrelevant. They're gonna, the prices are going to decline even more so. And when you got an $8 card with an Archive built around hype, it, it, it's gonna really hurt those players who are holding those decks. Gonna hurt those players who hold Max Ray Dark Worlds. Who got hurt? It's gonna hurt those players who got dead when they first came out. Two hundred forty dollars for a play set of like Nessie. Another two forty for a play set of Bigfoot. It's gonna hurt those players, and that's why I really didn't want to talk Danger up too much. I did talk Pinpoint Landing up a lot. And I still think it's a good card, and I'm hoping it actually shows any kind of relevance on meta. But the, the Danger, whole Danger Archer was very expensive, and it wasn't. It was good. But it wasn't good enough that I thought it would be needed in a meta, if that makes any sense. Um, Mega Knight the Morningstar was another card that was like $10, now sliced right in half. Now, people are getting ready for Mega Knight Invoked, looking at Shadows Valhalla, we can see an Aliester, which is supposed to be the hot card set, I don't think it's going to be, and the reason why is because, let's be honest with you, Aliester is a great card, Invoked, Mega Knight is a great deck, but you still have to compete against Gokis, you still have to, which, which extra deck lock you. You still have to compete, com compete against uh, Tricksters, Altergeist. All these decks control the board, in my opinion, better than Sky Striker, uh, uh, than Mech Knight Invoked. But I still think Mech Knight Invoked's a great deck. I think post, post Balance, it's going to be a good deck still. In fact, I'm going to have a Balance prediction video coming up soon as well. But anyway, I just want to pause real quickly and say thank you to Hernan Gendarias. Gen Hopefully I said the name right. Hernan Gadrias is my newest Patreon. My Patreons are exploding. I've been getting a lot of new Patreons. In fact, last month, I gave a box away to a random Patreon. I did it live. And um, I have about 28 current Patreons on my Patreon page. So thank you to all you guys. I think in every one of my videos from now on, uh, maybe in my Mark Watches, I mean, I'm in my Karshaw Vlogs, I might just mention the random Patreon name. Because really, thank you, guys. And by the way, you guys, just, I just want to once again... Pause real quickly on this one. I just want to talk about how in the in the card shop videos um, I'm also gonna be doing uh, things for patreons now probably not the one dollar patreons I'm gonna have more better incentives like v packs and v kits and all that stuff But I'll be discussed later on I actually just got approved from one distributor I'm waiting for a lot of uh, companies to approve me. I'm still sending paperwork through which hopefully Everything's good and um, yeah, I'm looking really forward to that guys So hopefully you guys right here watching this video might want to consider being a patreon uh, When that time happens if you're not one if you're not one yet if you want to be like a five dollar patreon Maybe work something out maybe every month I'll send like a, a pack of sleeves to my patreons or every month I'll send like sleeves to deck boxes or something similar to that. So I'm really looking forward to doing that guys Hopefully you are and um, yeah, can't wait patreon. Okay Moving forward pinpoint landing five dollars really thought it was gonna be high. So let's see observatory uh, this card was like seven, and, and now it's like three. It's, you blink, three dollars. Same thing with Ledger Le Legion, Legion. Uh This was another like seven to ten dollar card. Blinked, 
done. This was a couple of days ago, by the way. Uh, we would, then you got a little card, which is Apprentice, was like, dollar. this is this dollar card over here, nothing really crazy. Danger Zone being a $10 to $15 card on pre-release is now a dollar. Wow. That's pretty hard. And then I'm anyone pre-ordering Danger was just, oh, I don't know, man. I didn't get too much into Danger. I looked into it. I was like, okay, it's not bad, but it doesn't answer what I felt like was the current meta and the current state of the meta. Even the shift in the meta, which is all the guys coming into the fray, and maybe maybe pure Sky Strikers. I don't think it ain't answers perfectly. Uh, it can play with the big boys, but it can't smack the big boys consistently. That's what I felt like. And even though I, I thought Danger was going to be a good archer, I just didn't think it was going to be good enough to consistently beat the whole meta. Moving forward, guys, Dark Savior. Remember that thing? Yeah, of course you do, because everyone knows Sky Strike and Mobilize and Gage, which is currently still at the $75 price point. It's not moved, and it's not going to move, because we don't know what the balance is, and this card's been used in everything its mother, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just that simple. Uh, Widow Anchor actually was like around 15, 16, going back up to like 18 and 19. I guess Yu-Gi-Oh! players are starting to get ready to play a little more of the pure Sky Striker build, and I'm not sure if it's because of the newest Sky Striker coming out, or it's just because Sky Strikers in general are just a good control deck. We see it in the World Championship um, how Sky Strikers, which are even more heavily smacked uh, in the World Championships, uh, where we're seeing them being play there and doing things. And I think as Yu-Gi-Oh! players were like, wow, if that's happened, and we have more unlocks to this deck, maybe we should play this deck, give us like another try. And I think that's what we're seeing with, with, when it comes on the price point, of Sky Striker Widow Anchor. Beats now 19. Yeah, I don't know why. I, I, I've, I've tapped out of this card when I was like 35. I was like, nope, sell my playset. I can't play with this. No, 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 no. It was a $15 card I got in for about 15s. Now you sell it at about, I sold it at 35s. Now it's going back up. Man, for highest, hold it at $10 price. It was going a little lower. Now it's back to $10. After burner actually is kind of going low. The market price is around seven dollars. I don't remember it being seven. I remember it being around nines. It's in nine to ten dollars. Once again, it's now you your players might be considering getting a second scratch like after burner because we're seeing them playing the OCG. Uh, we're seeing them being played in World Celebration. Uh, so yeah, I think that's the reason why this card price might have floated a little bit up to the up to the surface. Gari's three dollars. Sell yours. Like, you don't have any extra sell it, seriously, because why you need Kagaris when we're getting ultis? Beautiful ulti Kagaris. Okay, so, Guinevere, Noble, uh, Queen of No Arms is worth money. Um, shocker. Now, we're seeing the, uh, uh the gold, no, platinum rare, not gold, gold shit, platinum, eh, not as bad, but, eh, I mean, come on, man, get your shit together, kind of rarity. Uh, we're seeing that go to, like, $2, and we're seeing Guinevere go to 9 to $10 for Guinevere, uh, Queen of No Arms. No more night players, you gotta calm the fuck down. You gotta calm down on your price points. Please, breathe. You don't, you don't, I don't know. I talk to, I, I, I talk to a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players a lot, like constantly. I talk to Yu-Gi-Oh players on Facebook and, 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 and the comment section and all that stuff. Mostly Facebook, though. And a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players that love normal nights always go, but we could be getting, we could be getting more. But everything you have gotten is trash. Yeah, you're right, okay. But we could get more and maybe we won't be as bad. Don't tell them. Don't fucking tell them. <laughs> just don't, yes okay no you're right no 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 you've been getting you've been getting shit on nonstop but maybe this is the gem okay that's all I'm gonna say when I'm gonna play it like your best card isn't using your deck it's using fucking gokies moving on moving on just okay gotta move on moving on up here to the Neca Valley remember this spike remember how high the high this card got well now it's coming down in value we're seeing it calm down both in um the Mega Tins uh which is starting to come down a little bit slower. Than the actual uh, legacy of Valiant Imperial Tombs on Mars, they're up. They're roughly around seven to eight dollars, which is a lot lower than what's previous like fifteen to twenty dollar price spike. It was insane where this card was going as far as its valuation, and its prices continue to, to decline. And the reason it's continuing to decline is because Great Keepers haven't done nothing. All we know is we've seen art for Great Keeper stuff. We haven't seen nothing with the OCG. We really don't know much about the new Great Keeper stuff, and we don't know if it's gonna be. Oh, we don't know if it's gonna be as used in the meta in the OCG, which can be kind of, sort of, possibly not, but not really. An indication of it being used in the TCG meta. I think some Great Keeper stuff actually did get, get shown to us, and that might be another reason why uh, its price did go down in value, actually. Now, now I'm thinking about it. Uh, Nugget Valley also is going down in value. This is a $20 card, and now it's coming to around $27, roughly. Uh, wait. I said it when, the, when, I made, when I made that video last time. Just wait. Because even though Nugget Valley Ulti is gorgeous, paying $27 for a card that's going to be going down to 20 soon, it's insane. So it's calm down, wait, and when this card hits 20, we just buy it. You can buy it again. That's, I mean, yeah. Uh, moving forward, Share Ride is also going down in value, which is insane because this card is still being used on meta. This is Maxi's retarded off cousin. Now, it's not as good as Maxi, 
But we don't have Maxi. So off cousin, come on, you're okay. And that's what Shred Ride basically is. And I think that a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players already have their Shred Rides. Already got their place. And they're just like, whatever, who cares? A lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players didn't care about the meta. And now we're starting regional season, like literally in a day. So regional season starts. We're going to see some of these card values change. We're going to see a lot of card values shift. And one of them is going to be Shred Ride, in my opinion. Next up, Spellbooks. So I like to throw in a little deck course in all my YouTube videos. I mean, my market watches. I like to, I like to take a stab at a deck core. Not like the Noble Knight stab. An actual, like, hey, this is not bad stab. And not bad stab. Uh, Spell like a pot. So stupid. Uh, I, I have a code. And it's hard to, like, get words out properly because I have a code. I'm not sure if you can hear it, or it, it's like right here, and it's all congested, and my words just go blur, and my brain goes, wait a minute, wait, okay, whatever, fuck it. Um, anyway, Spellbook of Power is currently about $28, and that's not a good price. Also comes Com, so who cares? Uh, the OT uh, Spellbook of Secrets is currently about 14 for Unlimiteds. Not bad, we got the reprints of that. We got the reprints of Blue Boy, but if you want the OTs, they're over here for about 4, 13 or 14. Spellbook of Power is a card. The only card, one of every few cards in this game I can't guess the price of is Spellbook of Knowledge, which was like 17, then it went to 14, then I was like, oh shit, I'm now 10, and then it went back up to like 17 and just doing all this bullshit, and now it's $10. I'm never guessing you by Spellbook of Knowledge. The only thing I hope is for Spellbook of Knowledge to come OT so I can feel a little bit better about myself. But as far as the current OTS 8 packs, it ain't happening. So we'll see what happens with the next uh, Konami exclusive packs. But look at Spellbook of Fate. It's only like five bucks for the ultis. You only play two, by the way. Grand Spellbook of Tower from Abyss uh, Rising, the Secret Rare, three, four bucks. It's dirt cheap. There's another Fate. Uh, if you want regular secret, so I don't know what you want, why would you want this version when you get the newer version. It's up to you unless you want the original print. Sure, two bucks. So I'm gonna master Castle Blaze of Secret Rare. Uh, it's coming out two bucks. Then you got your regular Blue Boys. Basically, Spellbook is pretty much budget. It's not super expensive. Now, there's other cards, by the way, you should get a, always have a play set of Spell Book of Judgment. Uh, there's other cards that might be worth a little bit of something. Let me see if I... Okay, here we go. Um, I'm, I'm talking about High Priestess of Prophecy, by the way. Um, not the bad, there's other versions of her that are relatively cheap, but the Return of Duelist version is a little bit expensive. She's still rocking them on $10. But if you want the High Priestess of the other version from the Ultra Rare, it's a little bit cheaper, roughly around $8, $7 to $8. So it depends on how you want to go. I got the Secrets myself, extra two bucks, I ain't gonna break my bank. And I really like the secret rares over the ultra rare. Ultra rare though, in, in Battle Pack 2 War of the Gods, a set I wasn't crazy about, this ultra rare actually looked really nice. Just wanna throw it out there. Like, it looked. Most secret rares bring out the card, uh, for me, uh, bring out the card's coloration really beautifully. It really makes the card look gorgeous. But when I look at the uh, High Priest of Prophecy and the ultra rare version of High Priest of Prophecy, the ultra rare has better coloration. Is it just, can, does anyone have. If you have two right now, go, go look at it. Like, I just like the Ultra Rare version a lot better as artwork-wise. But the Rarity Horror me <laughs> doesn't give a fuck about clarity. Or else I would have had a playset of, like, Ultra Rare uh, Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. No, 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 no. I got my playset of Secret Rare Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. Rarity Horror for life. Next up, remember how this, like, Megalo is getting a Super Rare reprint. And now, before, 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 besides looking at the Secret Rare, which I'll explain in a second, let's look at the Super Rare of uh, Shadows of a Hollow, which is currently around $3. That's the reprint. The rare is still six, seven dollars. Yeah, who cares about that? that's gonna go? That's gonna be low, going lower value. The secret will be going low, but it's still gonna be worth money. It's still gonna be hitting about maybe like ten to fifteens. And the reason I say ten is because that's after the beginning of every balance, Murmurs show play, and then they die for the rest of the balance. They're just dead. That's it's it's like that probably every single balance tends up is rising. Like beginning of every balance, it's like Murmurs, and then like one two deck lists go Murmurs, and then they're gone. They're fucking get out of here. See you next ban beginning of next ban list. And I think what Murmur is Megalo, I think it's priced after that after that introductory like, oh Murmurs, it's gonna go down and it'll probably be about ten bucks for Secret and Megalos. If you wanna get it that way. But until that happens, I think we're gonna see Murmurs go for twenty to fifteen dollars. It's pretty uh, a pretty secure kind of number for Murmurs to go down to Abyss Megalo due to the fact that we're getting a super rare reprint. Oh, up next, scraps. Actually, I'm doing another. I'm doing another archetype stab actually because Link Reigns Pack Two was just announced. Shocker! I've been talking about Link's Reigns Pack Two for I don't know how long. I think when I got back from Nationals, one of the first things I talked about was scraps and Link Reigns Pack Two. 
And I'm not sure Konami's me and Konami in the same wavelengths, man. I don't know what's happening. But I do know that Link Reigns Pack 2 is going to make a lot of Oda Archetypes Link monsters. Yay for Oda Archetypes, including Scraps. And the reason Scraps is kind of important to you, because Scrap Dragon, a card that came out in Dual's Revolution, had one tin reprint, which is disgusting, has his Ultra Rare also in Dual's Re uh, Revolution. Um, the, ult the Ultimate Rare is kind of up in value because I made that video, I believe. I could be wrong. But looking at Scrap Dragon, Ultimate Rare... Uh, but I be my buddy Jeff, um, Jeff Hicks came up with this idea about Scraps going, Scraps and a Link Frame Strike 2 would be so smart for Konami, because then, they, then, if Scraps are good, they could turn around and reprint to Scraps again in any set or any reprint set, because not many Scrap cards around the meta. It was really genius by Konami did, by Konami standards. Uh, unlimited limits of, are about $7. When you want to get first editions, even lightly played, we're talking like 13 14 bucks. And after that one's gone... We're hitting $20 for Scrap Dragons. You also got to get Scrap Twin Dragon, which isn't super hard to get. It came out on Star Trek Blast. Um, most Scrap decks play like one, two, if maybe. Uh, it's currently around $7, which is pretty big from its... It was originally like 4 bucks, I believe. Um, looking at other Scraps, like Scrap Orthros, which is another very hard to get Scrap card. Scrap Orthros only came out in Extreme Victories. Price point showing stabilization. Market price showing $4. And we we'll to go over here. Our limits are around 7s. First edition is going to run you about $8. For Scrap Orthros. Came out in Shooting Victories. If Konami was to reprint Scraps, and the reason why it would be smart if Konami reprinted Scraps, because there's a good amount of, the, of Scraps out there. There's a decent amount of... They had reprinted certain things besides Scrap Orthros. Uh, Scrap from Dragon wasn't reprinted, but there's a lot of them. And also, it's a Star Trek Blast, which should be a bing bing flash in your face, because everything that's good evidently comes out of Star Trek Blast, except when Star Trek Blast first came out. It had like two cards, I think. Let's look at it real quickly. I think Star Trek Blast had Shooting Star Dragon, which pl got played for very few, like very little bit, and then went away because plants went away. Global, Blow, which got played. Tune and Blade, which same thing with, with, with us. Tuning, see Shooting Star Dragon. Uh, that card was a lot of money for no reason. Um, Drawn Lockboy, which is dog shit. Now it's $17. By the way, fun reprint, ulti reprint coming out. Red Noah, which was money for collectors, not for Yu-Gi-Oh! players. The Cherry Cherries was never money. Like, for the most part, Star Trek Blast, when it first came out, was crap. And then everything becomes money. Even Side Blocker, which came out, was like, everyone was like, cool, we don't need this. Died in value, and it became good literally like within a year. I think I think it was when Jeff Jones made his first uh, psychic variant that ran like Grand Nog and all that stuff. So, like, was it Grand Nog? The Grand Sword, I think it was. Uh, Psychics. Then he was like, and people were like citing Side Blocker and all this wacky shit. Um, but for the most part, oh, Karakuris were good in, the, when the, in this deck first. Yeah, I forgot about Karakuris. And then later on, Great Cubes became money in this set because that's when Great Cubes got like all the reprints, and not just in this set, we were recruited, but other reprints that made that kind of relevant. So, like, like Star Trek Blast is another indicator. Now, I could be, I could be really stretching this right now, but I just, I, just, I feel it. I could be wrong. There's a lot, 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 a lot of deck cores in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. An insane amount of number. And I'm putting my hat in scraps. I would love Black Wings, by the way. If I could choose one, it'd be Black Wings or Crystal Beast, and it'd be amazing. It'd be so good. You guys will play competitive Crystal Beast. The idea sounds insane. That's in that sentence has never been done before. Competitive Crystal Beast, competitive scraps would be amazing. I mean, competitive Black Wings would be amazing. But if I'm re being realistic with the, with the market and the way Konami has been printing these cards, they're going to want something like scraps. They're going to want something on an older set that's going to make an older deck good so they can sell the reprints back to us. And all I'm saying is, if you're a rarity whore, or if you want to invest in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're going to want to get these cards before they go up in value. The hype alone is worth it. Whether these cards see competitive play or not, I, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you all day long. I don't know. But the hype alone will increase the value of these cards. Whew. Whew. Send money with token seven fucking dollars. And I have tons of these. Seven dollars. Absolute power force token. Now let's go into Shadows of Valhalla. I'm not sure if you guys saw, but earlier in the video, I talked about Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. How it was $15. Looking at it right now, just for Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, I'm a TCU player. She's 19. Little fun fact, like literally two, three days ago, she was $10. This is a super rare in the set. The, the, the reason why the price is so high, besides everyone trying to get the early access to Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, is because supposedly, rumored, rumored, let's rumor this one, supposedly, She's hard as hell to pull in a box. You'll pull one to two Ash Blossoms in a box. The rumor, okay? What I think is going to happen is Ash Blossom is an average pull ratio. I don't think she's short printed at all, at all in this set, to be honest with you. And that's rare because I love talking about short prints. And I don't think she's a short print. I don't I, I don't know about Aliesta. Supposedly he's a short print. But he's $40 fucking dollars. Up from his market price. On the pre-order market price, 
of $31 and the other is up to $40. And, um, and I'll, just, I, I'll be the first probably only person you'll hear this from. I don't think he's that good. He's good. He's not that good. I'm going to be the first to say it. I know a lot of you players can be upset. I know I covered Invoke Perga Trio, which is really good. And if you can make Invoke, invoke Perga Trio um, against any board, and that especially board that spams, you win. Fucks up scapegoats. By the way, good job, Konami, making scapegoat ultimate rare. Stupid idea now because now it can't be touched by the ban list. God, that's so dumb. But Invoked Aliester, uh, the Invoked uh, Invoker of Madness, is pretty crazy due to the fact that it's being really hyped up, and I think this is going to let a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh plays down. In fact, I'm going to go on a whim and say, if you pull it, you're going to want to sell it fast. It might be the next Cybernetic Horizon. Is that going to be the, is that gonna be the new thing now? Is that whenever it sets bad, we, we just call it the next Danger Archetype? <laughs> anyway, guys, Savage of Valhalla Booster Box is currently going for about $68. Um, Alistair Invoked Man is about $40. Ash is, Ash is uh, uh, 19 Uh Valkyries, someone commented, uh, hit me up on Facebook, asked me about Valkyries. Do I think they're good? Uh, no, but they're fun. So that's my opinion. I'm also gonna be sh in my Yu-Gi-Oh vlogs. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I call Yu-Gi-Oh free fall, and hopefully you guys like it. I really think it's something you guys are really going to enjoy. Yu-Gi-Oh free fall is a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh players playing against each other. Everyone gets eight thousand life points, and Valkyries are so fucking good in Yu-Gi-Oh free fall. But in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, they're trash. But I can't wait to show you this th this deck in Yu-Gi-Oh free fall. I'm like really excited to show you this because this deck looks so fun to play in Yu-Gi-Oh free fall. And a lot of Valkyrie stuff. There's three Valkyrie cards. Um, so there's Valkyrie Brunhilde. That's like ten. Um, there's Mistress of Time God. Is this, is this the one that, like, skips shit? Another player can activate card, uh, activate cards or effects in response to cards activation. Wow. Can I, can, can I be activated as a chain link to or higher? At the end of your battle phase, if all your monsters you control are Valkyrie monsters, minimum one, send this card to the graveyard. Also, immediately after this card results in effect, skip the start of the battle phase of your next turn. If you do, you cannot activate Mistress of Time God until the end of the turn. This card makes people want to play Valkyries, and the crazy thing is, I don't know Valkyries. Like, someone asked me if Valkyries would be meta, I don't think they're going to be meta. I really don't think Valkyries are going to be meta at all. I could be wrong, I don't think I am. Um, but look at the other Valkyries. Ride uh, uh, of the Valkyries 20, like, this is a cell bait. Uh, ninjas, another thing everyone's excited about. I love the artwork of the Ninjas. I would love for Ninjas to be meta relevant. And I didn't read any of the ninja shit. I just I saw this deck. I ran. I, I meant it invoked. I ran Valkyries, and I was like, super rare reprints, tons of reprints. I'm in. And I didn't read any of the ninjas, so I, I can't really comment on the price of the ninjas. Probably not doing so well. But um, hold, hold on one second, because back in the day, I'm not sure anyone knows this or not. If anyone was was you that old in Yu-Gi-Oh as I am, Dark Sub Morgue was the card ninjas played. It was a shit. Okay, uh, when this card is in the field, it's actually is also treated as wind. Uh, you can remove one dark and one wind monster from your graveyard to special summon this bitch from your hand. Uh, it has another effect. Hold on, no, that's ugh. now I got now I got to look up the other effect. That's gonna piss me off. I think it has like a okay, okay, here we are. Okay, your opponent cannot set any cards on the field. Boo yeah, twenty seven hundred attack. Um, Secret is currently going for three bucks. Let's see any first editions. Any first editions? There's modern you play. We don't want the modern you play, though, do we? No, we do not. No, we do not want modern you play. Any first edition? Late played? Late? Okay, here we go. Uh, $14. <laughs> so you get a limit for $3 or 14 Anyway, uh, so ninjas used to play that. And I'm not sure if any ninjas, ninjas are relevant, but he's wind. Add some dark ninjas in there, and you can play Dark some more, and That's just fun Yu Gi Oh! for everybody except the person you're playing against. And I thought it was a fun thing to do back in the day. I played that deck. I think it was hella fun. Uh, there's a Macabre reprint. Haha, ha, ha, ha. I told you to sell it. Hopefully you did. Uh, Invocation gets a reprint as well. Super rare. Damn. Uh, Twin Twister Secret Rare is gorgeous. And it's the same price as Twin Twister Super Rare. Why Why would you not want this? It's probably like, easy to pull Secret Rare. But goddamn, I'm so glad everyone's getting that. Uh, Saizo's uh, cheaper than the other guy. I spell uh, Secret Rare reprint. I desperately need a reprint. Uh, someone asked me also... Are reprints bad for you, Yu-Gi-Oh? And um, if you're a Magic Gathering player, reprints are terrible. And, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other video. But I just want to mention that. But Yu-Gi-Oh is the opposite. And not only are we used to reprints, we expect our reprints on a timely manner. And reprints allow players that might not financially have the benefit to go out and, ha and get the expensive cards to play uh, expensive cards that are reprinted. And sometimes in lesser value. And I love reprints for this game. I think reprints are amazing. By the way, reprints are great for Konami. Reprints are great for stores. Reprints are great for players. The only person that doesn't like reprints are the people that are Rebity whores and the sect of Rebity whores. By the way, no, 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 no. Not all Rebity whores like me. The sect is Rebity whores. 
there's a sect of Rarity Horse that don't want people to have these cards. I'm not part of that. I want you to have these cards. I just want the highest rarity version of them because something in my head says this is okay. And it's it's not. It's, it's just I just love it. Anyway, win the secret rare beats up win the ultra rare. So if you have your ultra rare, you should have sold them a long time ago. Show a fusion secret rare beats up show, show a fusion of the super rare, which I was looking to get the super rares, by the way. I was looking to get the super rares around sixes. And now we're seeing show a fusion super rares Spike down in value. Not not yet though. But we're looking at the secret rare control fusions being a fives. They'll hit like two and threes easily. So after I get the secret rare, bam, that's fucking gorgeous. I don't know what's better, like I said before, a Star Knight Secret Rare or DT. I mentioned another video. I don't know. A hidden village of ninjutsu arts. Like if you if you love Naruto, you're gonna build ninjas. You just gotta do it. It's dirt cheap, evidently, and god damn it, it sounds so good. Uh Secret Rare Alistair looks gorgeous. Get rare chaos secret rare. I 343 is still 342 higher than what the fuck this card's price is. I, I just, fuck this card's price. It, it's not worth it. Urgent Ritual Art, which originally needed a reprint. Uh, High Speed Roach and Bar, which needed a reprint, obviously. Another card that was really good, it's about three, a little under $2, $3. It just needed a reprint. It should not be that high in value. And you can play for defending this card's high value like a fucking domestic abuse victim was defending her man. No, black eyed person. It's bad. This needed a reprint. And High Speed, Ch Speed Roach and Bar, Secret Rare, I'll probably get that eventually. But not this crazy high price. It was like twenty dollars. No, get the hell out of here. That cost like ten on its best day, and I'm getting ripped off. Uh, I'm just I'm just making lost three dollars. Go in bamboo sword troll. Who cares? It was a hype of a, of something that would have happened but never happened. And the common boat golden bamboo swords were like six or sevens. Uh, Dragon Knight vagina. Cool. Uh, Cyberduck impact is a reprint. No one cares. As long as, as, long as you, uh, if you have DT or secret, you don't care about this at all. It doesn't. And if you have DT or secret, it doesn't matter. Your DT and secret probably still have value because they're collectors. And collectors are going into, into GX era. That's pretty good for you. Um, there's a bunch of other cards, guys. Like I said, you can look over the whole list. It's on TG Play, guys. Um, once again, I really appreciate you guys watching my Market Watch videos. I'm going to have another video coming out probably Monday. I'll try to maybe, maybe I'll do one during the weekend. I haven't done one in, in the past couple of days. I'm going to move my shop. Maybe I'll do one during the weekend, guys. But I'm really excited for my car shop vlogs. Hopefully, you guys watch my car shop vlogs. Keep an eye out for my Patreon. I'll mention when I change the tiers on Patreon and start adding more tiers for you guys if you're interested in, um, in, in joining my Patreon. The Patreon, I think I'm going to leave it combined with my shop as well as my YouTube channel right here. Just so it'll have like a dollar to support the channel. And then we'll, then we'll move up, you know, $5, $10 tiers. And we'll have up more higher tiers to allow you guys the opportunity to get some cool things. Maybe every month or maybe one time deal. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but I would like to do it every month. Every month send you guys like a V pack and, and do a live stream. Once I open the box, I look through the cards, and what basically what a V pack is, I open a box of a new set. I look through, we look through the box together, all of us on the live stream. I take a super rare and take two uh, the rare and maybe a random common. Put them bitches in the top loader, put them in an envelope, and 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 just seal the envelope up. So I'll have a bunch of envelopes all sealed up, tons of them, for as many equal to as many patreons. Uh, minimum 24, <laughs> uh, using my Patreons, and I think what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just put, we'll just, like I said, I get labor, I have a labor reader, I'll just slap labels on all those, all those envelopes, and I'll send them out, and then we'll see who gets the secret rare. It's kind of like eating the cookie. It's, no, it's not. Well, in a way. Anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Thank you so much for watching my Marco Watches. I have a lot of great content coming up, guys, so make sure, please, to subscribe to my channel. I might do another um, uh, opening a card shop kind of video in which I discuss uh, more of the business side of opening a card shop. I know some, you know some of you guys really like that a lot. So I'll probably do another video in the future about you know, the business side of opening a card shop, what it entails, what, what, what more paperwork and all that hilariously horrible stuff I have to go through, which some of what I did, some of what I still have to go through and do more, as well as the vlogs, guys. I think the vlogs are really cool. It gives you an inside look of what I do to set the card shop up. Not only that, but what I have to do once inventory comes in, which should be coming in hopefully around sometime next week. And I'm hopefully I'll be open, able to open within a week, two weeks max. So definitely come on, check out my videos. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And hit the notification bell. Let you know when these videos are up. It's your boy V. Subscribe my videos. That's what you said. You guys have a great day.